Günther, thank you very much for coming to share your knowledge with us. Günther is, uh, will present himself in a minute. Uh, what I can tell you is that uh, Günther is known as an innovative manager, special, uh, specialized in uh, digitalization, expert in, uh, in, in multi-channel marketing, and, uh, and big fan of our community. Thank yes, you very much for exactly. being here, Günther. Thanks a lot. Um, I don't have a mic. But shall I put a mic or what? can you Nimes. tell me in the back? Okay, perfect. Um, maybe, yeah, to just introduce myself because I don't look probably not even like a marketeer, but definitely not uh, like a data scientist or something that comes uh, even close. Um, I'm f today uh, heading marketing at, at AXA in, in Belgium and also responsible for the transformation of, the, of AXA in, in all its access because the insurance business is, is evolving a lot and will evolve a lot in the coming years. But it's just a new uh, job for me. Um, I'm at AXA since uh, May. Before that, I uh, worked at BNP Paribas Fortis for seven years, was head of marketing, and at the group in Paris for BNP Paribas, uh, heading mobile and, and big data. So there is a, a bit of a link, maybe. And before that, I worked seven years for the Boston Consulting Group, uh, which is basically uh, advising companies on strategies and this kind of stuff. So, my first message for today is this one, a disappointment. I can't learn anything uh, to you about, about data. Uh, sorry for that. Uh, it's not my ambition and, and I just cannot do it. For me, when, when you say data, uh, what can data do? There is this big blurry thing looking a bit like that, which is projecting in my eyes. So I can see, it's, it's interesting, it probably connects, it will help. It's, uh, voila, I, I believe in it, uh, I understand we need it. Uh, but I don't want to go any further than that. I leave that uh, to, to the others, uh, as long as I can. But who am I? Uh, I grew up in a, in a, in a very different world, in, in a classic world of, of marketing. And the classic world of marketing is a linear process. And it starts with producing stuff, making products. Can be cans of Coke, can be banking products, insurance. So producing stuff. And then the next step is, we give the product to some marketing guys and think, okay, how can we market this? And, and some of you remember the books of, of Kotler and the four P's of marketing and this kind of stuff. You see it here, product, price, uh, promotion, uh, place, this kind of stuff. That's what I learned at university and that's what I have been putting in practice. Okay, then the marketing guy does his job and then he passes the baton to the sales guys. And the sales guys basically, they have to sell. They have to yell to the clients or to the distributors to make to do sales, okay? And then they chase, at the end of the road, a client. Not, they're actually not chasing the client, they're chasing the money that the client has, trying to grab a good part of the money. So it's a very linear process that, that, that we're used to in, in when we talk about marketing and sales and going out towards uh, the client. Now you can say, where's the D? Where's the D of data? There is no D, there was no D. So where was data as, as, as to marketing, I would say it's, it's kind of, you need it kind of, but it won't help you really to make success. And I look at it when I look at metaphor and I look at it, it's a bit of a rear mirror where you say, okay, I use data to see in the back, okay, what have I sold? What, what, what is the performance doing some customer research? What happened, you know, and then to use data to look forward to see how you can do business. That's more of a bloody picture. It's not very sharp, it's not very useful. So yeah, we, we need data to do some segmentation and stuff, but it's not really key for the business in those days. Although in some businesses, data has always been key. Who knows this picture? Rings the bell? No? It's the Delta, no, it's the, the Lloyd's marketplace in, in London for insurance. Th this is where insurance business in the world was born like almost 400 years ago. And these insurance guys, actually, they started with mortality tables and, and accident rates and all this kind of stuff, very data driven, and they do a lot of analysis, okay, and then make products, pricing, and go to the client and this kind of stuff. And they make these analytical models on top of the data, which, uh, which calculate annuities and very complex stuff. And the insurance business, they invented actuaire, actuarissen, for this job, long, long time ago. And for me, even though I come from a world marketing where data was not a big thing in the past, I now join an insurance company and suddenly say, whoa, 
data, is, data was born maybe even here, or, or sometimes I have the impression. So I tend to use now this slide, makes me popular within AXA, within the company to defend uh, uh, and to, to give them a flower. But actually it raises already first question, okay, what is then from an insurance viewpoint the difference between an actuaire and, and a data scientist? We come back to that later. Uh, there are analogies, but it's about a new area where we enter in. Now those are all the old days of marketing. Okay, what has changed? I'm not going to elaborate a lot about this because you, you know this is maybe better than I do. It's, it's a lot about the things about technology. Well, you know all the words, what's, what's happening. Uh, it's a lot about crisis. And sometimes in a business, you need a crisis to change things. I've been there. I, I joined Fortis in 2007. And I don't know whether some of you kind of remember what happened in 2008, just right afterwards, the bank crisis. And looking with insight to that, I think for the banking, it was in the end a thing which was needed and that really are, has changed stuff. And it's because of the crisis, in my deep belief, that the bank realized we lo that we, lo we lost all client confidence and the classic model of selling bank products was no longer valid. And at that point, the banks, all of them in Belgium, they said, hell, we need to change the model. And what they did is they invested a lot of money in digital and in data at that point. And now I talk five, six years ago. And this is something that, that happened uh, at that point in time. So I like crisis to some extent because it gives room to break existing models and to do, to do new, new things. The regulation is another one, in, depending on the sector, but in telco, in banking, in you know, many sectors, the regulation is looked at like a hurdle, something bad, something evil, but every regulation has a new opportunity to make competitive advantage. And I am deeply, I have a deep belief that with regulation, if you use it well, uh, you can do uh, new things and the role of the marketeer needs to take uh, a benefit of, of these kind of things. Uh, be it competition law, be it uh, consumer protection or whatever. Social media, you know about that integration of value chains. That's an interesting one. In the old days, people like me, I know exactly if I have to, to have something, I go to different sectors. I, I have an example. If I want to buy a television and I watch television, okay. I first, I go look maybe in my mailbox to find some promotion of Van den Borre. The post will bring that to me. Then I take my car. I drive to Van der Borre Medemark, that's where I'm going to buy a TV. But I pass by the bank to get some money. Okay, then I get my TV, then I need to have a cable subscription. I go to Telenet, Proximus, Vu, uh, whatever. Then I go to the pub to tell my friends I have a new television and they're welcome to watch Champions League match tonight with me. But I know to solve my problem, I go to five different industries. It's the same with traveling. I go to an airline, I go to a hotel. I know these sectors, but more and more today, these sectors are blurring and fading into each other. If you look at Google, Apple, which sector are they in? It's difficult to say. They are somewhere up front in the value chain and they compose the offer I need across sectors. It's not relevant. And when we talk about an insurance product, to give one example, it's something you may need after you bought a car, after you moved. But it's just one tiny thing in the client experience at the end of the value chain. So the, blurry is, the blurrying of the industries is a very important factor and shifts power from existing industries to new industries. And this is something very, very tricky, very, uh, very much shaking up business models in, in the entire world and something we need to understand very well. So that's changing. Now I pick one of these change points myself and this is my personal start of the changing world. And it's not just because this happens to be my birth year. I was born in 73. But it's by coincidence that in that year, these two guys did something. Do you know this? Who knows both guys? Yeah. One. Yeah. Vincent Cerf and uh, Martin Cooper. In the same year, this guy invented the mobile phone, the first wireless phone. And the other guy invented the internet, which was the, the ARPA network across uh, US libraries. It was the foundation of the internet. Later came the protocols and all. But this was born a long time ago, and I was born a long time ago. All happened a long time ago. And then nothing happened until many, many years. You see the graphs of the pickup rates, and it's only in the last 10 years that it picked up. And then came for me, for my personal uh, belief, two uh, very big new points. And that was this guy, you know for sure. 
And what he did was something very simple and genius. The first trick he did in 2007 was to take a mobile phone and to move, to move him on the internet. So the mobile phone gets internet connected, and that's the iPhone. No one, no one saw it happening. He was a genius just by simplicity crossing two, two evolutions, two different worlds. And that's like the, like the urknall in the old days. Huh? Some coincidence happens and things change. And then three years later, this guy did exactly the same trick in just the opposite direction. And again, nobody saw it. He took a PC, an internet PC, internet connected PC, and he made it mobile, the iPad, just the other way around. So it's, it's in all simplicity things happen. And this is where, where is the origin of what the new industry leaders find their business model on. And these companies are, are there and they have very different models. You know all that, okay, but what's the, the real importance is that they are fucking up the industry boundaries. They are, above all, setting new client experience expectations. And that's the thing that we, as an established company, cannot ignore. We need to understand Having an Uber experience is very different than having a taxi experience. Having a Netflix experience is different than a few years ago when you go to the videotheque to rent a movie and you know all the stuff that happens around that. It's very different. And this is what impacts us and you and all of us. The experience level is very different. And that will change the job of marketing and sales profoundly as well. What does it mean? One of the things is that I dare to say that the classic push marketing is death. It's not totally death, but it's bound to, to die. And this is the model that I was born with. It's about producing products and then distributing them into the market and chasing some clients with money that, that go buy them. That model, push, push sales, push marketing. With the new models that these guys uh, are installing using digital data and everything we need, we move to the pool world and in the pool, sales and marketing world, the trick is different. It's about <coughs> understanding the micro needs of every client, sense, sense the needs. Client may be moving, traveling, wanting to hear music, whatever happens, you need to sense it as a company and you need to respond to it, pull, but then respond with a piece of a value proposition, which is not always sell a product. It's not always a one night stand event. You get to know and you buff, you slash a product in the face. No, it's about having a relationship, engaging, getting to know better and better the customer, and at the right moment, you can sell a product. This is what we call in the marketing, the, the pool marketing. You need just to sense and respond. And that's where it gets interesting, because to run that model, we as marketeers need to focus on the customer. We need to be able to sense the customer and to respond one-to-one -to, -one to the customer. To do that, we need to, much better than today, than in today's physical non-data world. We need to be much better in understanding the customer. In the physical world, the shop owner, the bank agent, the insurance broker, they all say, I know the client. Yeah, right. You know bits and pieces of some of your clients, but you don't know exactly, is your client marrying, is he having kids as of the first day? You don't know everything. In the digital world, you can know a lot more, and you need to capture data. Once you have data, you need to anticipate needs. Maybe this client maybe needs a television. Maybe he needs, uh, he wants to travel. He needs to travel. Maybe he needs insurance. This is understanding detailed one-to-one -one needs, client per client. When you have that, you need to understand much better what do you want to offer. Is it a product that we sell to all Belgian people? Is it a product for this guy? Tailored to his need, customize the value proposition with digital and simulation tools and all this kind of... Uh, a comparison thing, you can go much further in making the right personalized product or, or service for the client. Much better than you can do in the physical world with a rayon, with a, with a shelf. And the fourth thing is, in, in that world of, of Uber, Netflix, all these guys, you need to deliver a great customer experience. A customer journey that excites, that's easy, that meets the needs, that's enjoyable, fun, and all that. And with digital, you can give a lot more experience every day. In the physical world, you can give very good experience, but very infrequent. So my point is, the role of the marketeer on this axis, we need to use data and digital a lot more. And we could do a lot better than established business models and industries. 
And in that model of customer experience, where do we find data? Okay. Data is, is for us a part of an equation, and I put it a little bit in a, in a small, very small model. Uh, it's about the what we can offer to the client. That's not the topic of today, but it's about what we call the product, the service, of the value proposition. It can be information, it can be anything. Um, it can be a bottle of water in an Uber taxi. It, it's really everything. The what. The where is about touch points. It's more than the physical shop. Okay, we have all digital, mobile, uh, partnership, social media, all this kind of stuff. Much more possibilities to sense needs and to respond to clients and to engage. But then is the, the third one. And the third one is about whom, which client I want to show what in which channel. And it's about when. What is the right time to talk with a client about topic X? And the right time is always client-driven. It's because the guy is moving or marrying or, or divorcing or buying something or whatever. It's client-triggered, <coughs> the, the timing. And that's where data becomes very important in the, in the entire equation. Okay, there is an, a fourth one which I call the brand, which is a kind of an X factor uh, that, that make people choose for a brand uh, a bit different. Now, the funny thing about the equation is it's multiple, it's times. Which means if you don't have a good offer, you can do anything with data or anything with touch points, it will not give a customer experience, you will lose. If you don't have the touch points, you cannot reach out, you're dead. And if you don't have data, you try to sell the same thing to everyone at any random point in time, you won't make business in the new, in the new world. So data is an important element, I would say one of the three key elements driving customer experience, one of the three key elements that is driving the business model of all these guys. And can drive the business model of any company whatsoever. Now to do the data point, what does it mean? Well actually, let's play a small game, a small Pac-Man game. For those that know Pac-Man also, huh, from my uh, age. It's about having a lot of prospects and trying to make them full clients. Okay, this again, so we share them. Um, moving them to the right, okay? Now we can, marketeers or sales guys, they can just shoot with the cannon to the entire crowd and some will buy. Let's take it, some will buy and some will jump to the other side. It's the one night stand sales approach, which I call. But in reality, the clients are not there or there. The clients are somewhere in the middle because they know your brand, some of them. You have already an interaction with them. You understand some of these clients, in what situation are they, what are their appetites, you do predictive modeling to some extent, and they're a prospect, they didn't buy it. They participate to a game, maybe. Uh, so you start to engage, get to know the client, and you profile. In the back, you profile, and then you buy first product, then becomes a client. Well, it's, it's all members eh, for me, but okay. Uh, and then you, you, you start serving, you start uh, treating complaints, you start uh, giving the lighters, you start to retain, you start to sell, sell cross-sell, upsell, and there is a lot of stuff happening. And there, the key of the game, or the winners in this game, are the ones, very easy, that know where is the client, where is he, so I can uh, see at what time I can shoot him with what. So it's a very easy game. Uh, just you have to know where is the client. So it's about hiding and then discovering where every, every individual client is. And that's where data comes in the game for a marketeer. First, it's about profiling. It's not a, just the hard data about product possessions. It's about uh, where he lives and all this kind of stuff. But it's a lot about appetites to buy, appetites to churn, appetites to whatever. But that's profiling. That's modeling. Then, yeah, then the, the, the profiling is bas the basics. Then the predictive, you go a step further. With the, model, with the modeling, you enrich the profile. And you say, yeah, this guy is probably going to move or something like that. And then you do the targeting. That means sometimes some insight you use and you say, buff, I have an interesting info. I will know, put it in a channel and it can be picked up and I do an action. It can be an email, very classic. It can be a personalized video on the website of a newspaper. It can be anything uh, that we target. So we shoot a bullet, try to engage uh, with the client. And that's where data is, is key. And without data and new data scientist technologies, we cannot do this. We cannot do this. And that means at the end of, uh, of this game, you will have a lot of, of losers. You will have companies that missed the clients. 
And those clients, they end up somewhere in a shop very late in the process, and they go queue to say, I want to buy something. And then they often take a queue, and that's why the analogy to, they take a ticket and they declare, I want to buy, but they have to queue. That's the failure of the system. So basically, to pick a, a ticket, that means no one else figured out what I need, and no one else was able to reach out to me with a customized offer. They all failed, and I, myself, I have to go at the end of the process to Telenet to buy a cable subscription, whereas I bought a television earlier on in the process. So that's the failure uh, metric. Now, what does it mean in terms of high-level use cases in insurance? And I put banking here because I've been working much more in banking than in insurance over the last years. And I think for the data, is much more than what we discussed. This was about commercial use, so to speak, in the business models. This is what we call the next best action for whatever reason. It can be a question, an offer, whatever. But there are other use cases. In the banking environment, I was focusing a lot on yeah, credit risk analysis. Can the guy repay his loan, for instance? Data is an interesting uh, thing uh, to do that. Uh, banks have all the data about what you do in life in terms of you buy stuff, you pay bills, and you use cards and all this kind of stuff. This is very sensitive topics. Banks in Belgium not really doing this in the, in, in the States, they do. So you can do stuff about spending behavior and plenty of stuff to do for people like you with those kind of data. But it's difficult for a bank, not easy to find a real use case they can really monetize for that. It's very sensitive. It's in Belgium not very much accepted. It's not like in the US. In the US, banks, by the way, they, re they receive from third companies 50 uh, US dollar per client to have access to the spending data. And clients give that. So that's the model in the US. It's not at all in Belgium. Uh, on the insurance side, it's a little bit different. Apart from more of the commercial where we need to spot risks of clients when they move, when they travel, when they get kids and all the stuff. It's a matter of spotting risk and informing the clients about, watch out, you, you're not protected. Maybe you need assistance and this kind of stuff. So the second big one is about risk assessment. With data, we can help clients and we can detect needs about illness, about driving behavior, about fire risk, uh, about liability uh, litigation with the neighbors and this kind of stuff. So data can predict and assess a lot about risks. This is going to replace or enrich the uh, mortality tables that we used before, where we all have the same score in function of the age and this. We all have the same predicted uh, day of dying in the tables of an insurance company. But in reality, you live different. You smoke, maybe not. You sport, maybe not. You eat healthy or not. In reality, data-wise, it's, it's, not, it's not true. There are ways to better help you prevent and to uh, do certain predictions. There we need to take into account the privacy, of course. So that means we can only, we should only use that in this kind of agreement with people and in the benefit of people, which means you have lower premiums, you have a better return or whatever, if you want to step in these models. There are things about fraud protection, which is in insurance sometimes uh, an issue in some cases, so we can uh, easier detect fraud by using big data, geolocalization, and, and various stuff. There's things about prevention. We can predict um, um, storms for farmers, for instance, or uh, that can damage the car. So you, we can predict and we can prevent to say, put your car inside, it's going to storm in your village tonight, for instance. Um, we can inform you if you have, uh, you're on a place where it can become dangerous in another country, for instance. You can do plenty of stuff with data on prevention, and you can do plenty of stuff with assistance, giving assistance to people to help them uh, to, live, to live freely and to detect needs uh, for elderly people, for instance. When they fall in the house, we could detect and we could send someone to them. So you have plenty of opportunities using data and other technologies in insurance. And I'm convinced that due to this, the métier of an insurer will evolve drastically in the coming years because of the new possibilities of data. And it's not only about the marketing use, we told, but it's about much more of much deeper in the business of a company. And that holds for many industries, not only for banking and insurance. Now for marketing, for an old marketing guy like me, um, it changes a lot of things. Okay, we don't have the linear marketing process from the first slide. We are no longer in the push marketing, we're in the pull, in the sense response. 
And it means that the key success for marketers are about understanding the customer. One-to-one, -one, not groups of customers, not segments. It's more than that. It's one-to-one -one understanding. Where are the clients in the Pac-Man game? It's about modular value proposition. It just, it's not just one product that we push in the market. No, it's about giving bits and pieces to clients at the point in time they need some information or a coverage or whatever product. It's about omnichannel. It's much more than, than physical shops. And then it's much more than digital only. These are complex hybrid and omnichannel journeys uh, that we need to understand and we need to manage and develop. It's about understanding the sales funnel. Remember where people do not know the brand, they get to know the brand, then we have to uh, inform about what we offer. We, you, know, you bring them in the funnel to make them excellent clients at the end of the day. This is something that marketers need to manage step by step, and it's not about a binary buff a sale and it's done. It's about emotions. When you start sensing clients and need to respond, you need to take into account the emotion of people. That was less the case in the previous world, and that's a, diff a difficult one. And it's about aiming for advocacy. We want that customers have such a great experience that they tell it to their friends <coughs> and to their network. Then we have leverage on our actions. We go viral with our model. And in the end, for a marketeer, it's not just about customer experience. It's finally about money for the company. That's in every company case. And if this model works, we will acquire more clients, and we will upsell, cross-sell on our existing clients, and we will avoid churn, retention. And by that, a marketeer can reach business objectives, and the CEO will say, okay, I still need a marketing guy around the table, and I need a marketing a guy around the table even more in the future than in the past. That's the challenge for the marketeers with this new model. Data in this game, from a marketing perspective, Data is the fuel in a new engine, which is made by big data technologies, which is run by new people, which are the engineers, which are the data scientists. And these are key in the, in the marketing model, apart from, you saw it in the formula, the touch points and the brand and the, the offer, the value proposition. So key role for data for a marketeer, whereas it used to be just a rear mirror. Remember in the beginning? So in the end, the, what happens? With the marketeer, the word marketeer is maybe dying in the sense market is too broad. We're not trying to place a product in a market. No, we try to understand a customer, every one individually and try to serve the customer. I don't know how to call it. I try it customer ear, but I don't like it. So it's very ugly. So for the moment I stay with the word marketeer and I will remain a marketeer. I think that's a bit what I wanted to say today about how data has an impact on the role of marketing. Thank you. I, I suggest that we, we have time for two questions for, for Günther. So uh, who wants to, uh, to ask a question about what you, you just have heard? We can also switch immediately to the next presentation and have a, a question gathering yeah, at the back. Yeah. How do you see the difference between B2B and B2C marketing? Uh, becoming more fluffy. There are two, two trends. I think B2C techniques will dripple down also in B2B environment uh, to, to some extent or to a big extent. And also disruption will be, will be there in B2B. I've seen it at the bank where I used to be. Even cash management is the bank role. Today, you have a lot of startup companies that just bypass banks and go with uh, XLS, uh, XML files straight into the value chain. So you have a lot of stuff happening in B2B, and it can be uh, found inspiration in the B2C world, so to speak. But it's a little bit, sometimes slower, but that can be dangerous. Huh? Sometimes you can really buff and be there. And there is a second one, that behind every B is another C somewhere. And that means the linear approach from a B to a B to a C will become very often glass house, buff, that you have or you need to build some insight over the B with the end client of that business partner, often in a win-win setting. And this is the, they used to call it B to B to C, but it's actually, actually maybe B to C to B or something like that, or in a triangle. 
And this is, I think, a new trend where uh, with the new technologies and the data, the B2B will no longer exist on itself. It will serialize. <laughs> And you go to the C behind the B, if you understand. It's a bit mathematical, but you guys are excellent in mathematics. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. Another question, last one, and then we move on. Uh, we need to? Yes. Um, what issues? We need to be tackling the privacy topic with prudence and very well, but be proactive. What I mean is, it's a win-win in the end. If the client wants relevance and wants simple life and have the best prices and the best products, if he wants that, he will need to accept that he exchanges some privacy if you want. That can be very basic, uh, innocent, but moving, uh, driving uh, to, to Antwerp, is it a privacy thing? For some people, yes. For some people, no. So the trick is to try to explain to clients, if you give something, you, give, you get back stuff. And you need to be explicit on it. You need to be kind of opt-in kind of stuff. But the opt-in needs to be very uh, transparent, but easy. Not big hurdles where you need to sign documents and kind of stuff. And that's the difficulty of the, of the thing. Uh, today on the website, you go to the website and have these cookie policies. You, you get a, you have, where is the X here, the year, above, and you click it. Client does not realize what's actually happening. Eh? Uh, that's the bit of the problem. Uh, what's happening, you know what's happening. Uh, he will be traced and actually that will be in his benefit to some extent because he gets relevance in return and good offers. But we, we don't have a good model today uh, because clients do not understand. We fool a little bit. I mean, we, I mean, the whole world fools a little bit with it. And the client implicitly expects. In my belief, uh, Privacy is something that people will accept to give in a certain extent away. But there is a lot yet to happen to, to, to be to that level. Uh, and there need to be new technologies, control mechanisms. It's a good question. It's an open question. I don't have the answer. But it's not by blocking of privacy that, that, that the, the world will move, I believe. It's a, it's a very good question but, and a very difficult one. Okay, thank you. Thank you.